So I've been eating a carnivore diet or mostly carnivore diet most of the time for over eight months now and I have learned so much about oxalates, oxalate dumping and histamine intolerance and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So my, my name, name is Sue, welcome to my channel. Um, I, as I said I have been on the carnivore diet now for just over eight months so a little bit of history. Um, I started on carnivore at the end of May 2022 so 30th of May to be precise um, and I've been so it's been just over eight months we're now beginning of February 2023 um, so this has been a big learning curve and a big learning process and I think for some people that go into carnivore um, it is it just depends on what's going on in your body some people have a really easy road and some people have a little bit of stuff that goes on but for me it's been fairly full-on trying to figure out what's going on in my body and how to resolve it so when I first went carnivore I was determined to go 100% I stopped all my supplements and I was just going to dive in I'm generally an all or nothing sort of a gal and so that was me I'm going to do this and I'm going to jump on in boots and all and get rid of all plants out of my out of my life and just do carnival so um, initially I think I was still drinking some herbal tea but that was about it stopped all my supplements and was pretty much 100% now um, I've been looking watching lots of carnivore channels you know um bell of the steak and butter gal and the doctors you know um dr sean uh sean baker and um um, um dr mm, can't think of their names you know whenever i get on here i can't think um it's, it's, i get a bit camera shy i think um dr no oh, i'll think of them later you dr know. anthony chaffee dr kilts um Dr. O, there's another one. There's a few. You know who I'm talking about if, you, if you're doing carnivore and looking at people on YouTube anyway. So the first couple of months that I was on carnivore, things were quite good to start with. Um, so my history, I've had issues with irritable bowel and uh, diarrhea specifically for most of my adult life. And it's always been tied to anxiety like when I was young I used to say it was when I was nervous it would kick it off um it was when I was a teenager and then as I've got older I've had periods where anxiety has been a major issue in my life and um even panic attacks and that sort of thing and the diarrhea has been kind of always kind of tied in with that so when I first went on kind of always I said things were quite good um my bowel was, seemed to be a, a bit better and my anxiety seemed to be a bit better. And I was like, yes, this is doing great things. And um, the things that I did notice was that I was super hungry initially. So I had been fasting um, for about 18 months, kind of off and on doing it intermittent fasting. Like, So I'd quite often fast through the week, um, 18, 20 hours a lot of the time. Um, and then I would eat a bit more on the weekend. So I'd shorten my fasting. So I was kind of doing the the kind of up and down just to keep my body guessing a little bit and I was slowly losing some weight um, and the fasting was easy like I didn't find it difficult um, but when I started on carnival I couldn't fast I was so hungry and apparently that's really common because our bodies have been especially when you've been like me and a lot of others you've been vegetarian you've been vegan for years um, even when I went back to eating meat I was still highly plant-based and so our bodies um, cells are basically starving for nutrition and so you just get really hungry so I couldn't fast initially um, and so I just went with it and just ate and so all was well um, apart from yeah still a bit of diarrhea and a bit of anxiety just kind of the normal you know that I've been dealing with um, and then I started the 90 day carnivore challenge with Bella um, from Bella the steak and butter gal um, and I thought, okay, so I jumped on into that with full of anticipation and and um, fairly sure that I was going to get amazing results and hopefully some weight loss. At the beginning of August was my first month, and so at in that challenge they um, get you to 
uh, feast initially. So it's about feasting and fasting. So it's about filling your body up with nutrition so that you can fast um, without your body going into that mode where it thinks it's starving. So initially they get you to just eat, eat and eat and eat and eat, eat until you're sick of eating. And so a lot of people, a lot of people gain weight. Not everybody. Some people lose. Funnily enough, um, I didn't really gain a whole lot. I gained about I don't know. I gained a little bit initially when I went on to carnivore. Uh, about four kilos I think and I'm not really sure whether I gained in the I might have gained a little bit a little bit more at the at the in that first month when we were doing the feasting part um, but it wasn't anything major um, some people gain a lot of weight so um did that and that was all fine um and then um the 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 the, the second month of the challenge um, I've just got, got some notes down here so I keep looking um, the second month of the challenge we started doing some fasting so my first 40 hour fast so you're kind of building up your fasting muscle um, getting a little bit longer a little bit longer and so my first 40 hour fast um, I had gone fine I had lunch so I had just a couple of um, meat patties that I had made out of you know mince ground beef whatever you want to call it with just a bit of salt and might have had some cheese in there and garlic powder um and so all was fine and then my next client came in after lunch and my anxiety kicked in like I went oh my anxiety is often there like new clients in, in particular will set it off and the first client of the day or the first client after lunch is quite often when it's at its worst you know when it had a break it's just the way it works um and so I went in and I was talking to him and next thing I'm having this panic attack and I just I made an excuse about being too hot and having to go get changed and I dashed dashed out and had diarrhea and I'm not even not going to go into detail but it was not good so um so then I was just like even more anxious after that because of the diarrhea side of things that was so it was so bad and so sudden and that started happening particularly at night time after dinner often um, I'd have tea and I would then with 10 or 15 minutes I'd have to run to the loo and um and it was just like water it would just come straight through me and it's like what the hell is going on why is it doing this you know so I ended up, I took a lot of the advice, you know, tried different things that the coaches in the in the 60-day challenge gave me. And, I mean, they're awesome. But I just kind of felt like what was going on with me, they didn't really understand. And so I dropped out after 60 days and didn't finish the last month um, and decided I was going to try and combat this myself, um, try and work out what was going on. So I stopped worrying about fasting and stuff I still I still fast often during the week when I'm seeing clients because it just makes it easier for me um, if I don't eat then there's less of an issue um, and so yeah so I was trying to work out what was happening so I experimented with different things I, I tried I thought maybe I was having too much protein so I tried lowering my protein uh, it still happened so then I I stopped eating eggs I stopped adding any additional fat so I stopped having any extra butter stopped having butter in anything stopped putting butter on things um, and I started taking ox bile now those things seemed to make some difference and I was having less problem it was still because I, I realized that part of my problem was oxalate dumping but I was having some oxalate and it was still happening and I, it would go in cycles you know every few days it would be an issue maybe every three or four days it would be an issue and then it'd be not so bad and then it'd be an issue again so I kind of knew that that was part of it but it was still when it was happening it would just take me by such it would be I'd have to get to a toilet so fast it was just yeah and just like water and it would just happen out of the blue so um so that was it was still happening sometimes but it had been better it was improving so then um 
do, do, do. Just looking at my my notes. Um, so yeah, no eggs, no butter, and yeah, so start taking ox bile. And then, so I started adding more, a bit more plant food back in. That's what I did. I had tried blueberries when I was on the in the second month of the sixty day challenge, and they seemed to help a little bit, but they're not very high oxalate. So I thought maybe they weren't enough. So I tried raspberries, no go, didn't make any difference. Tried um, different, like going back to some herbal teas with cinnamon in and those sorts of things that had oxalate. Um, not a huge difference. And then I tried um, eating some almonds. <laughs> a few days of eating almonds and still, yeah, still no go. And then I tried potato. Potato seemed to make a difference. So just normal white potato, we just have a small one at dinner and we were having them because hubby started having them as well because I'm eating them he eats them too um, I'd have one e each night with dinner and that and the ox bile, ox bile made a huge difference so I'd, I was like I don't know whether this is the fibre the oxalate or both but it, but it was making a difference and so I was like sweet finally I've, I've got a way of at least managing this for now um, because I know I'm, I'm going to do a video about my um, my history with oxalate and um, the reasons that I've got so much oxalate, I believe, in my body. Um, and so, yeah, so I thought, well, if I if I can manage this for now, then that's all good. So the, I was doing that up until Christmas and over Christmas, and that was all fine. Um, and then. Still was having the occasional night where I'd have to dash to the loo after dinner. Um, now, I started taking that gut health pro product, which I talked about in my last video, um, just after Christmas, and I had no diarrhea at all for four weeks. I was still having potato, not every night, but, you know, maybe three times a week, and ox bile, and no diarrhea. And I was like, Okay, sweet, something's working. The other thing which I didn't actually think too much about was I'd actually stopped drinking bone broth. Um, and I'm not sure why I stopped it. I don't know whether it was just that my parents were here and so I didn't make any or I couldn't be bothered or I'm not really sure why I stopped drinking it. Um, or maybe I made a batch that I didn't really like. Um, I don't know. But so I hadn't been having any bone broth and I think that I'd actually seen something about bone broth potentially causing your body to make more oxalate and that might be why I stopped um, so I started to increase my fat levels again and everything was fine good as gold no diarrhea I was like yay and then I made some bone broth and had some bone broth and boom diarrhea again so I'm like, okay, so why is why is that happening? Is it oxalate? Or is it histamine? So I started delving into that subject. I'd seen a little bit about histamine. Um, and I thought, well, if I had a histamine issue, wouldn't I? I know I've, I've got a bit of a histamine issue because I'll have patches where I get this kind of hay fevery symptoms and my nose is streaming and that sort of thing. But that wasn't happening. And I was like, so wouldn't that be happening if it was histamine? That was what was kind of going on in my head. Um, so I experimented. I can have powdered bone broth, and it's fine. It doesn't cause me any issues. They must um, must be the way that they process it. But when I make my own, um, I realized that it was causing problems. So, so I had some. It caused problems. So I stopped again for a couple of weeks. No issues. Made some more bone broth, but with a shorter time. Because um, I was putting leaving mine on for 48 hours. So I cut it down to 24 hours and I think I, I had to go at making a batch that was in the pressure cooker that was only an hour um, I didn't really like it so I didn't drink it um, but the 24 hour one was really nice and so I had some the first day um, that night had dinner sprint to the loo with diarrhea hmm okay the next day I actually had two cars suck up a punishment I didn't really click I kind of clicked that night before with the diary but yeah I um, thought I might just be a one-off so the next day I had two cups of bone broth 
and had a bit of diarrhea again and had massive anxiety, like massive anxiety. And I was like, hmm. Okay, so the next morning I went to heat some bone broth up and then realized that my eyes were really itchy. And I've been having problems with itchy eyes in the not too recent past, probably when I was drinking the bone broth. And then because I'd stopped, um, they had settled and then they'd come back. Because I was standing there, I was putting the stuff into the Thermomix to heat it up and realized that my eyes were really itchy. And I was like, mm, okay, so tip that, tip that out and didn't drink it, had a powdered bone broth instead. So then I kind of dove into the whole histamine question again and started looking at what people were talking about, you know, with their reactions and stuff, and realised that histamine intolerance um, can cause diarrhoea, it can cause anxiety, it can cause panic attacks, definitely causes itchy eyes. Um, and so I kind of figured that that is what a big part of the problem is as well. So where I've had, I've kind of had... A mixture of things going on I think and it's been the oxalate dumping and the histamine reaction and so trying to work that whole thing out has been a bit of a challenge for me um, but I think I've got there I think I'm there now so I've stopped drinking the bone broth I'm just having the powdered stuff I, as I said before I think it must be the way they process the powdered bone broth you probably find that it's pressure cooked really quickly and then dried and powdered and so it's not sitting because Histamine is created in foods when they're aged. So the other, that was the other things that I was doing that probably contributed to this. I'd started having apple cider vinegar and water again in the morning. Just a tea, just a capful, like not a lot, but just a capful. I was having that every morning. And I was also eating probably more leftovers than I usually do. And so those sorts of things, so leftover foods when they've been cooked and left in the fridge, um, vinegars, fermented foods, um, olives, those sorts of things all can contain histamine because they're all aged. So, and the longer things are aged, and it's like if you've got meat and it sits in the fridge, even as raw meat, if you're really sensitive, can build up histamine. Uh, ground beef tends to have more histamine in it um, because of the fact that it's all chopped up, I think. So, yeah, um, so that's kind of where I am at now, I finally, finally, finally feel like I've worked things out and I'm getting there. So um, the diarrhea seems to have gone. I haven't had any problems now, I don't know, for a couple of weeks at least. Um, it's only been when I've had the bone broth that I've had problems since before Christmas. That's the only times. So um, not eating any potato, but I am still having a little bit of oxalate. I'm having oxalate. I'm having black pepper. Um, it, making sure I have that every day. And I have, because I have that in my powdered bone broth. And I'm having um, the gut health, which has slippery elm and slippery home has, has oxalate. So I think that's kind of managing my oxalate dumping symptoms. The oxalate doesn't seem to be irritating my gut as much so I think it's taken months but I think finally it's dumped enough that it's not causing my diarrhea or contributing to diarrhea anymore um, it is still causing me some muscle and joint pain and that sort of thing I've still got stuff going on I think from oxalate dumping but not the diarrhea so that's super cool because that, that's been the biggest thing and so now that the diarrhea has settled down I just need to get rid of the the mind part of it, because anyone who's had diarrhea for years knows that the mental side of that becomes a real thing, and the it's almost like an obsessive, repetitive thinking about it whenever I'm in a situation where it, it might have been an issue in the past, if you get what I mean. Um, so when I'm working with clients, um, some days worse than others, um, and... Or if I'm going and doing something different, going to someone's house, uh, somewhere where I don't know where the toilet's going to be, that's still that's still an issue. Um, and so I've just actually started on CBD as well. So that's I'm going to do a video talking about that too. I've only been on it for a few days, but I think it's making a difference already. Um, so yeah, so that's me for today. Um, fingers crossed, the diarrhea thing's not not an issue anymore apart from in my head um so yeah so if this is something that you've had experience with 
post below. If you've got any questions or comments, post below. Um, I'm in the process at the moment of reading Sally Norton's book, um, Toxic Superfoods. I'll put a link to that below. Um, it's a good book. It's worth, worth looking at um, if you've got oxalate issues and want to learn more about it. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, like, share with anybody who you think might benefit from the information that I'm sharing, from my experiences. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing a video talking about my the oxalate side, that the oxalate side of things specifically, and I'll put that up um, probably in the next few days as well, hopefully. Okay, I'll talk to you again another day. Bye bye for now.